Dimitri said, artificial intelligence will never exist. But it's actually just so much better than that. It's so much better than that. So this is a TED talk, and naturally, I need to start out with technology if I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence. And I'm not just going to talk about computers and cell phones, right? Technology encompasses so much more. So if we look real far back, humans developed this thing called artificial mechanics. We created levers, pulleys, gears, and ramps to help us move incredibly sized objects. Humans created artificial movement, right? Humans created planes, trains, automobiles, and boats to help us move not only ourselves, but things across incredible distances, and actually even across incredible mediums, like space and the ocean. We also created this thing in the more recent past called artificial voice. So we created things like email and the telephone, and it helps our voice travel again across incredible distances and through incredible mediums. And not just voice, but signals of all types. And a talk about artificial intelligence is actually also a talk about language. And language matters because it reflects how we think and feel. And I kind of lied to you because we don't call these things artificial mechanics. We don't call them artificial movement. We don't call them artificial voice because that's not actually how we think and feel about those, right? Humans created these things and we are in control of them. So we say that we're taking advantage of mechanics. We say that we're transporting ourselves and goods. And we still just refer to email as communicating. What we're doing is we're taking control and we're augmenting our physical abilities, our limitations, and creating more. I'm going to drop a bomb on you, and I just did, right? Brains are actually bad at computing. Brains are bad at computing. And that's OK. Just like our arms can't lift incredibly sized objects, our legs can't carry us across incredible distances, and our voices don't carry incredible distances either, our brains are not meant to compute. But the thing is that brains actually do compute. So every day across the world, two children, imagine yourself in a school classroom, two children are asked to stand, and then the teacher proposes a race to them. The race is, who can answer the question faster? What is 17 times 21? Okay? And as a formerly trained mathematician, this is terrible. It's lamentable beyond belief because so many people grow up thinking that they're bad at mathematics when actually 17 times 21 is a computation. And while our brains can do 17 times 21, and some brains are a little bit better at it than others, it's not mathematics, it's computation. We're lucky. And you all know this, because humans have created a technology to do computation. And we called it computers. It turns out that computers are actually fantastic at computing. And I want to take this moment to remind you all that computers only do two things. They're very, very simple. Okay? Computers store data, and computers process and compute on that data. And if you take away anything, just remember that humans tell the computers what data to store, and, compu and humans tell the computers how and what to compute on that data. Now, oh, this is a talk about artificial intelligence. And since I showed you this picture, I'll put it up anyway. 80% of you, images like this will come to your mind, right? Does, does that happen to anyone here, that you, you envision robots taking over the world? Right? The, even the words artificial intelligence invoke this fantasy-centric image, this fear-centric image. We're going to lose jobs. They're going to take over. It's them. They're learning. Right? But if you ask an AI researcher what is artificial intelligence and what image pops into their head, it's not this image. And I'm going to show you all what artificial intelligence is because they know what it is, AI researchers. And you don't need to be a PhD in mathematics or computer science to understand it. I can actually explain it in just one minute. We're going to start off small. And this is some data. This is data on education and income. Each dot represents a person. 
it represents how many years of education they have and how much they make in a year. Simple as that. Now, I can represent the correlation between education and salary or income using a simple line. Now, this line captures the correlation between education and salary. Now, some people would say it captures the signal. And there will always be noise, right? There will always be a point for the Mark Zuckerbergs who don't have a college degree and they make billions of dollars. And there will always be points for PhDs who are homeless. But it captures the structure in the data. And it's not quite the line, but rather this algebraic equation that represents the line, that captures this correlation, this structure in the data. A simple algebraic equation. It's a mathematical encoding of the structure in the data. Now, I'd be a little bit naive and a little dishonest if I said that this was all of encompassing of artificial intelligence, because it's not, of course. Actually, in the past 20 years, what changed is the data itself. The data is not just a number of education, years of education, and it's not just a number that you make. Now images are data. Video is data. Audio and any kinds of signal is data. Networks of information are now data. DNA is data. Of course, to represent the structure in this data requires slightly more complex mathematical equations, but actually only slightly more complex. So we actually take this line, just gloss over this with me, we actually take this line and we pass it through something called a sigmoid function. It's not that scary because it's still just a mathematical encoding of structure and data. And we actually might make this a little bit more complex and pass a few of these into this network kind of structure, but it's still just a mathematical encoding of structure in the data. Because in the end, if images are our data, right, the structure is going to be a little bit more inherently complex. But the structure is still there. If you have billions of images of faces, right, the structure of a face are circles, with maybe some circles in the middle of it. Right? And we can encode that mathematically. Now, of course, talking about artificial intelligence, I have to talk about intelligence. And I do not purport to try to define intelligence for you here today. This must be the most slippery, intangible concept in human languages. Right? But I will present to you a few kind of commonly held characteristics of the concept of intelligence. Now, computers, not only are they bad at, but they don't and never will have motivation and desire. Of all the Google, the Google computations that have occurred on this earth, now and into the future, not a single one was of the computer's own volition. Computers have never thought about the future, they've never pondered their future, and they've never had to use that information to adapt and change their behavior because they've never even thought about it. And finally, computers have never thought about other computers, much less themselves. And I don't need, we don't need to discuss and have a conversation about what is intelligence to know that we're dealing with fundamentally the brain, and if I may, the mind, is a fundamentally different thing than a computer. Again, a computer stores data and computes on it, and the human tells it what to store and what and how to compute. Language matters, and not only does it reflect how we think and feel, for better or worse, it even influences how we think and feel. And right now, the words artificial intelligence influence us to think about analyzing data in this. Does this look like a mathematical encoding of structure in data? So I'm up here today to try to get you guys to think. What if we started thinking about artificial intelligence from the perspective of a human? And I don't purport either to stand up here and paint a, a picture of the future, like I hold this image of how the future will be, because that's not true. But I do want to share with you 
some personal experience and what I'm currently working on to hopefully bring artificial intelligence in, and humans into something that we're not yet. I imagine the day where I receive a friendly text message and it says, Charlie, you're turning 35. And while it's normally suggested that men get a colonoscopy every five years starting at the age of 45, your genetic makeup, the environmental variables, your family history, and your life choices make you higher propensity to get colon, uh, colon cancer. You should be getting a colonoscopy in the next 18 months and every three years from here on out. Or how about, hi Charlie, you're 50. You have a higher propensity of acquiring Alzheimer's or dementia. And reading isn't enough to keep your brain fit. You should be doing X, Y, Z exercises to ensure that your brain maintains itself and physically fit. Not only will preventative health care help us to extend our lives, but treatment and preventative health care will also help us to have a happier, richer life in that period of time as well. Imagine, what if we told computers what data to store and what to compute on them? Analyzing data and artificial intelligence. What if we took all of our healthcare data and our medical histories and we put them into a central repository? Imagine a 40-year-old male contracts a rare gastrointestinal cancer and he presents symptoms. He goes to the ER after two months of not eating Right, he's, he's finally had enough. He goes to the ER, not once, not twice, maybe seven times. And he keeps getting turned away. Oh, it's indigestion. It's an ulcer. Now, is this the ER doctor's fault? No. Her job is to think, is it an infection? What's the immediate cause? She, her job is not to digest all of the medical records, the signs, symptoms, diagnoses, and outcomes of all human health care. But that's exactly what computers can do. Store data and compute on it. So if I actually stop, and all of you stop and take a second to think about it, having a machine be empathetic doesn't help us. It doesn't help me. I already have friends. But having the ability that my loved ones can get preventative health care and can get early diagnoses and treatment to save their lives, to extend their lives, to better their lives, really does help us. Thank you very much.